to the Shining Wall, Moostick Tower, all of them. Greetings everybody, welcome to Epic TV. It's PLA to Or Week here in Chamonix and there are more world-class alpinists in Chamonix than nuns at a cucumber harvest. <laughs> and it just so happens that Hayden Kennedy and Kyle Dempster have stopped by the studio. Hey, how's it going? What's up, man? Hayden, Kyle, Hi. welcome to the show. Oh, thank Thanks for you. having us. Yeah, you guys thanks. have been nominated for a PLA to Or for your uh, new route on the south face of the ogre. Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks, yeah, we're stoked. You know, the ogre has, I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but uh, the ogre has only been climbed twice before, and it's considered one of the hardest climbs in the world. Maybe you didn't know that. I what? do know that the uh, ascents before us were way more epic, like Doug Scott like, broke his legs on the summit and stuff. Yeah, yeah. on the first propel from the summit. Or something like that. And then it took him a week to get down. Yeah. S yeah. Crazy. It's got a terrible reputation. What makes this mountain so difficult? It's big and pointy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 7,000 meters? 7,285 meters? Yeah, that sounds, sounds right. Right on. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, so, so where is this thing? In the Choctaw Glacier, which is in northern Pakistan. Okay, and yeah, I forgot to mention that Josh Wharton was with you guys. He joined you mm -hmm. for this climb. Yeah. Walk us through it. The climbing wasn't like too terribly hard, really. It was just like Kyle said, really long, with some hard, like definitely some hard climbing intermittent with that. But I mean, we just we slapped in the basin below the the ogre and the ogre too. So like in that, you know, we slept there a night and then got up in the middle of the night and started climbing. Like yeah, real early and uh, had a really long first day. Like climbed at least elevation wise, like probably more than half the mountain the first day. And what's that first uh, part of the mountain like? What kind of climbing is it like? Uh, most of it was, it was really straightforward for a long while. Like, uh, we didn't even use a rope until... Until that traverse. Until like three o'clock in the afternoon when we finally got to this, like the first part of that red dotted traverse. And that was when Hayden led uh, like one and a half pitches of like really, really terrible rock. I don't know if you can even call it that, but it was, yeah, just like kitty litter. The next day you guys start up, day two? Mm hmm yeah, and that, it was more just easy, enjoyable, unroped climbing for probably the first half of the day. And then, then we got- Is it mixed or is it? Uh, just like 50 degree snow slopes for a while. Okay. And then, then we got to the start of more, yeah, like traversing as we're kind of wrapping around to the south face. At that point, Josh is starting to show some signs of... Uh... His face is really swollen. He had like a really bad cough, bad headache. He kind of... But wasn't like... Yeah, so he like visually looked uh, pretty messed up. And, uh, but he, he was still like very... Um, mentally aware of, of everything, of conversation and like engage and making jokes and, and very expressive of like how he was feeling. So it didn't seem like severe, severe altitude sickness. Yeah, he was like, cause then, oh yeah, we like chopped the bivy and then we got in the tent and we started eating and drinking some food. And like he started feeling a lot better after that, I remember, cause I remember when we were chopping the ledge, we were, he was, and then, you know, whatever, he didn't feel that good. And then after some food and, some water, he was like showing signs of getting better. But yeah, then we slept or like sat there for the night and in the morning, the weather was still super good, but kind of a little bit on the, on the um, had, I don't know, there was some clouds and some wind and we didn't really know what, if the weather was gonna come in heavy or if it was just gonna stay. It ended up staying nice for like two more days after that or something like that, so we were super fortunate, but and that's when me and Kyle kept going to the top. And mm. so how, what was the thought process of, uh, hey, Josh is sick, we're gonna gun for the summit. I mean, how do you make that decision to, to, to split the team and, and... Yeah, it's certainly not an easy decision to make, you know, but one that has been made by countless parties in the past and everyone feeling good about, about the decision that we did make. And yeah, there are those like, you know, the risks associated, like if, if Hayden and I hadn't returned, you know, leaving Josh there without any ropes to come down. Right, like, you're taking all the gear with you. Yeah, right. Um, so certainly a huge risk, but huge risk in climbing the mountain in the first place, so. 
Maybe Greg Child said it best, you pay your money, take your chances. We've arrived at the crux of the route here. Looks pretty hard, but we got it. Oh yeah. Clearly it worked out. So what yeah. was that uh, summit day like? That was, that was definitely the most awesome climbing I thought. I mean, the rock got really good. It was like this golden patina granite. It was super fun, really fun mixed climbing. Me and Kyle just shared some really good pitches and awesome ice little couloirs intermittent with steep rock. And it was spectacular, yeah. It was awesome. About how far was it from that last bivy to the summit? It's 250 meters or 300 meters, something somewhere around there. So not that far. It was really good climbing. It was cool, it was like mixed climbing on perfect granite above above 7,000 meters. I thought that was neat. And then it was cool. We got up and like the clouds started whipping around and, and with the ogre too, and we had these great views of the. And then we got to the top, and obviously we could see like K2 and the crown and into the Biafo and the Hiss Bar. I mean, all over the in the China. It was it was awesome. Like K2. So he came down, no problem getting Josh off the mountain. We were making sure that his like, you know, he was threading his belay device right, and usually on the rappels, like I'd go down first, and then we'd send him down second, so Hayden could kind of manage, and I'd make sure that he'd get clipped, clipped in. Yeah. yeah. If you were on the jury and you had to uh, give the award, who would you give it to this year? <laughs> I, don't I don't know. I mean, they're all. They're all so rad. I mean, probably the Russians, because those guys are just tough as third world dogs. I mean, the Russians are badass, I don't know. Yeah. But, the, but then also the, the Nagar Parvat. Yeah, those guys, man. I, we just were looking at a photo of those guys the other day, and that guy's toes are like way blue and black, and <laughs> I think those guys suffered a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and that's like a massive route, so that's like much respect to those guys. Well, guys, well done. Congratulations again. Thanks. Great climb. And, cool. uh, Hey, good luck. What's the best way for us to uh, keep track of you guys? You gotta fly to Salt Lake City. You gotta go to Higher Ground Coffee. <laughs> we gotta mention Higher Ground Coffee. Yeah. Best and coffee in Salt Lake City ever. Uh, best coffee actually in the universe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's the best coffee ever. Mm. Thanks again for coming in. And uh, to hear more about uh, the PLA Door nominees, stay tuned to Epic TV's YouTube channel. And until then, charge hard and take chances.